I'm Helen Caldicott. I'm a paediatrician and physician. And the reason I'm wearing this T-shirt, which says Vermont, USA, is that I've just been to the beautiful state of Vermont where Ben and Jerry's ice cream began. I know Ben and Jerry. And uh, they've got an old leaking nuclear power plant there beyond its use by date. I was there a year ago talking about the dangers the uh, Natural Resources Committee in the State Legislature, whom I address, were very sceptical initially, but when I went back a year later they were totally amenable to what I had to say, because Energy, who owns the reactor, has been lying over the last year. They said first there were no underground pipes, which of course there are, um, and there were no leaks. Well, they've been leaking tritium into the water at very high concentration levels, and I think strontium-90 as well. So the committee now um, were absolutely open to what I had to say. And rather being sceptical of what I said about the medical consequences of nuclear power, they were extremely sceptical about energy, which just wants to make money by selling uh, electricity. So what would be the process here that you envisage that could in some way uh, control, control the problem. Vermont is the only state which has a law that says the state legislature can, if it's so desired, shut down a nuclear power plant. So if we get, and, and what it means is they want to extend the license of this reactor from 2012 where it ends. It's been operating for 40 years, which is beyond its use by date, for another 20 years. And that's extremely dangerous because the reactor is really it's falling to bits, it's cooling tower collapsed recently. Uh, so if Vermont uh, decides not to extend the license, the legislators, then that, that reactor gets closed down and that, that becomes a model to empower people who live around the, hundred and the other 102 nuclear reactors in America to do the same thing, even though they don't have the same law. So it's very, very important. other states don't have the legislation, but you know, laws can always be written. Laws are not set in stone. Laws are set up for the well-being of the majority of people. And if they don't conform to that standard, they must be changed. And so people are going to have to move at a grassroots level and change the law. So they can, can close down these hideously medically dangerous uh, machines. So are there other reactors of a similar age and um, building uh, standards as, as the Vermont reactor and what would happen? Would we likely to see something like Chernobyl or, or Three Mile Island or what would... Yes, most reactors in America, there are 103 operating reactors, are old. Not as old as the Vermont Yankee, that's one of the oldest, but many are very old. And of course the biggest news here is that, that the, the reactor 3 that blew up this morning in a giant mushroom cloud, we hope it was just explosive hydrogen, though it doesn't look like that from the experts we've talked to, is a MOX fuel plant Mark I, one of the most deadly plants in the world. It's double fueled with plutonium and uranium. Double fueled. 
Um, I just got chills right there. That makes Chernobyl look like a joke, ladies and gentlemen. It's a double-fueled Mark I MOX reactor that just blew sky high. I'm praying right now that containment facilities didn't get breached. Do you have any idea? One microscopic amount of that, you're dead. Dead. For the Japanese people especially, ladies and gentlemen, pray for them right now because this is hellish what's unfolding. I was watching Fox during the break, and they, were, they had the head on the bottom. Should this spark debate about nuclear reactors? Should we be concerned? I don't know. Should we? Why do you idiots? I was looking at where nuclear reactors are in the U.S. It's almost like they only put them on fault lines. Why? Austin's on a giant fault line. They've got them on the New Madrid fault lines in the Midwest. They've got them on the East Coast on giant fault lines. they got them in California on fault lines. They only like to build them on fault lines. Why? Why? larger issue is, you know, what's the better technologies that are out there that we could be applying energy needs to have a significantly lower risk and, and, and a lot higher yield per capital dollar? Because these, these plants not only are expensive to build and generally are overrun by cost, but, you know, when you really look at you know, the big picture risks, these, these are them. And, and in seismic areas, these are risks that we really should be considering more carefully, and, and, and we haven't. And, and this is maybe the bigger issue, um, you know, facing the country. And, and well, that's it, because when you raise concerns about this, they call you a commie, and right. then, oh, you just don't like nuclear power. Folks, I'm all about power. I'm all yeah. about coal power. I'm all about right. hydroelectric. I'm all about wind. I'm all about technology. But the truth is the entire nuclear industry worldwide has a horrible history with government of covering things up, whether it's the Japanese, whether it's the Russians, the U.S., right. all of them have a horrible history. Now, the nuclear industry has been pushing the line that nuclear power is the answer to global warming because it doesn't. It's clean, green, and sustainable. Three lies. It produces uh, in the whole fuel cycle huge amounts of CO2 because if you go to a uranium mine in Australia, Olympic Dam. Um, or Ranger, you, you just can't believe the size of the trucks, the amount of CO2 the pump, they pump out, the huge diggers and graders. So if you take the whole nuclear fuel cycle from uranium mining right through to the chemical processes and the milling and the enriching and building the reactor and the storing the waste for half a million years and the transportation of waste, at the moment a nuclear power plant produces one third the amount of CO2 as a similar size gas-fired electricity plant. But within a decade or so, as the quality, the concentration of the uranium ore declines, because it's all been used, they're going to use much more fossil fuel to extract the amount of uranium to produce the fuel for nuclear power. And within 10 or 20 years, nuclear power will produce the same amount of CO2 as a gas-fired plant. So that argument is fallacious. Uh, number two, um, if there was a meltdown a la Chernobyl, well, for instance, the, um, the terrorists who flew into the World Trade Towers had in, in fact targeted the two nuclear power plant reactors 35 miles from New York, called Indian Point 1 and 2. And they didn't go into them because they thought there may be missiles protecting them. In truth, there's nothing to protect nuclear power plants against terrorist attack. But had they gone into them, that would have meant the end of uh, Manhattan, you know, the, the financial capital of the world. Um, so in retrospect, they probably should have, if that's what they wanted to achieve. Um, uh, there's a new book now out called Chernobyl, published by the New York Academy of Sciences, which translated 5,000 articles written in Russian uh, medical articles. Now, there aren't many medical documentations written in English about the effects of Chernobyl, but this is a very magnificent publication. Chernobyl, um, New York Academy of Sciences, and you should get a copy if you can. I think you can also download it as a PDF from their website. 
More than a quarter of a million people have died there. And this is a huge conspiracy. 40% of the European landmass is currently radioactive. Much of the food we import from Europe is radioactive because these elements, the radiation, remains radioactive for 600 to a quarter of a million years. Dr. Nick Baggage joins us now, breaking down the unfolding disaster at Fukushima. Uh, Dr. Nick Baggage, whenever I read this AP article, uh, LA Times as well, radiation hampers efforts to restore power to a nuclear plant in Japan that they're having to pull back because the radiation is so high, but they won't tell us what the levels are in those two Japanese states or prefectures right in that area. I mean, that right there is a horrible sign, is it not? Yeah, it is. You know, in fact, um, uh, that, that the lack of information probably tells you a great deal right now. And, uh, and I think what we'll see is, uh, again, it's going to be a big, um, a much, much bigger event as the story uh, unfolds. And, and, and the bigger question, and I think that's part of it, too, you know, nuclear industry is a big industry, and they have lobbied uh, political bodies wherever these facilities exist to the point where, you know, they've rented a few politicians for, for long-term investments, and uh, I think that's probably part of why we're not hearing so much uh, either, is, you know, that's a very, very powerful uh, political lobby, and, 